Hey everyone, um, good evening. My name is Ali Forbes. Some of you may know me, some of you might not. I'm the Beef and Lamb New Zealand Extension Manager for the Eastern North Island um, and very welcome to you tonight for the Beef and Lamb New Zealand So Grow Thrive Financial Webinar, Empowering Farmers for Financial Success. Um, this is number four in the series. Some of you hopefully will have maybe been on earlier and um, enjoyed some of the ones that we've had in the previous weeks. There is also podcasts on the Knowledge Hub if you care to go back and listen to them or you've missed something. But yeah, basically tonight, um, this week's webinar is called Farming Through the Seasons, as you can see from the title on the um, screen, Mastering Cycles with Financial Insights. And we're very lucky to have Rob McNabb, who's a consultant up in the mighty Waikato. Um, he is coming on to talk to us about some of his experiences and he'll run through um, some situations that he's been in and also hopefully you'll walk away with some valuable gold nuggets. Um, just to let you know that basically, yeah, there's also... Also, my colleague, sorry, Mark Harris is on. Um, he is the extension manager also for the Eastern North Island. Um, he has a vast experience at doing webinars and he's gonna facilitate this evening for us. Um, along with, we have backup from Dean Cinnamon, who's another extension manager in the Central South Island um, and Olivia Wedderburn, our Beef and Lamb New Zealand National Program Manager, who's going to run the tech behind the scenes because thank goodness it's not me that's doing that. Um, also, just if you have a question, you'll see at the bottom of your screens that it says Q&A. In that Q&A, you click it if you have any questions. No question is a silly question, so please do answer, ask anything, um, and hopefully we will get back to you um, and answer every question that comes up. Um, general rules around webinars, Obviously your cameras are off, everyone is muted at this stage, so yeah. But I will introduce you to obviously Mark Harris, who's our facilitator, and he will then introduce you to our um, speaker, Rob McNabb. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Ellie. Uh, pleasure to be here this evening uh, to do this. Um, yeah, I just uh, want to do a quick intro to Rob. Um, he's very well connected to the sector. Um, he also walks the talk uh, he's based in the uh, Western Waikato and puts much of what he is telling his clients into practice on his 147 hectare property in the Waimaa Valley near Te Akeo. Growing up in a hill country farm near Whanganui, he's always knew he would stay connected to the rural sector throughout his career. He completed a, a university degree at Massey in the late 80s, did a bit of travel, and when he came back, he settled in with what is now balanced agri-nutrients for a while. He then moved into the banking business uh, with Robobank, um, and then he did some further study with a Kellogg Scholarship and, a ma and he has a master's degree in every business from Lincoln. So he's a well-balanced agricultural university graduate. And just recently, he's become the chair of the NZIPIM, which is the Institute of Primary Industry Managers. Uh, Rob has also developed a reputation for helping farmers develop better long-term strategies for their farm businesses including viable succession plans and improvements to farm systems. Along with his 147 hectare property, Rob also leases another 580 hectares dry stock farm and in the Waikato, and he's chair of a 600 cow dairy farm equity partnership in Otago. So as we can see, he, he walks the talk and has got a well-balanced um, portfolio um, outside the business and on the land. Today, he balances boots on farming with his portfolio of farmer clients who represent the spectrum of farm variety across New Zealand. One of the things I do like about Rob, I, he's got a little personal mantra that I, that I really like, and it goes this way. For me, being involved in, the agriculture, in agriculture has been about helping and assisting farmers at grassroots level, seeing positive outcomes for their, fam, their uh, families we become involved with. And I think that's a great way to hand over to you, Rob, to start this evening's show off. Thank you for that, Mark. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, it's a pretty wild night up here in the Waikato, as is probably throughout most of New Zealand, um, which actually is a great segue into what we're going to be talking about tonight, which is uh, farming through the seasons. And before I start, 
really would like those questions and answers to come in to get for you to get some real value out of your time you're spending tonight. Uh, so farmers are well versed in farming through the seasons. Uh, there's obviously our climatic seasons, but then we break down those climatic seasons, such as summers. They can either be dry summers, hot summers, wet summers, uh, bugger of the summers. Um, and so one of the ways I'd like to look at it tonight is that there are other seasons as well that we farm through. Uh, there's tough years, there's good years, there's bad years. Uh, and sometimes in those tough years, it's a combination of poor product prices, tough economic conditions, uh, a whole range of things. And tonight, we're just going to focus on some of the things that we have learned in the past that we can take forward uh, and put into the knowledge bank. And one of the things that I'd really like to work on tonight is uh, this great quote from Winston Churchill, never let a good crisis go to waste. Uh, so this is, this is the theme of tonight, is what can we learn and develop and put into our farm businesses that will see us through the next range of difficult seasons that we're looking at. So what I'd like to uh, do is just give us a bit of a background so we can actually put some perspective on where we're at at the moment, and then maybe just uh, three or four key take-home messages that you can start to put into your farm business. Some of the things you might look at doing um, with both your uh, with your team and uh, and your wider group, uh, and then we'll just wrap it up uh, well on time by half past eight anyway. So. Have, this is a tough time. There is no doubt about it. We have low product prices and we have high interest rates. We have a whole range of things that are happening right now. And so this is not a crisis. Far from it. It's just one of those bad seasons. And so how do you approach it? You eat an elephant one bite at a time. So that's the key thing here is don't get overwhelmed by what's immediately in front of you. Break it down. And that's what I'm going to be focused on on as I go through tonight is basically, how do you break this thing down so it's easy to manage? And so that's the key message here. When it seems overwhelming, break it down into manageable actions and solutions, just as you have in the past with uh, things such as droughts, things such as uh, difficult to get stock into works and those sort of things. You just break them down into small manageable actions and then the solutions come from that. This is, as I said, put it in perspective, this is nothing new to farmers. With climate, markets, and a changing regulation environment, it's always happening to us. How we, how we handle it, uh, we handle it every single time. And that's what I just want to really emphasize. What is always different is your perception, uh, experience, and knowledge. When you go through your first drought, the perception and knowledge and experience is completely different compared to when you go through your 15th drought. I don't have to talk to too many farmers to, uh, to find out that they've experienced one or two of them. And now we're fortunate because we've got new tools and techniques that we can use, but you need to use them in the business environment nowadays so you can adapt quickly. And I'll touch on one or two of those things as we go through. So let's get right into it and let's talk about some of the keys to overcoming challenges. The first key, there's three keys here and the first key is knowledge. You need to understand your business and the systems, where the strengths and weaknesses are. There's a number of techniques you can use here. Uh, one of the ones we are using successfully is in our farm plans now, is that uh, in our resource inventory, we are writing down where the strengths and weaknesses are on farms, uh, and it's a real eye-opener to a lot of farmers and creates a lot of solutions for them. Build up some key measures that can be assessed quickly and efficiently. For those of us who live in the farm accounting package, software package system, quite often we're having a look at what our overdraft is and what our overdraft is likely to be almost on a weekly basis, if not daily. That's a, just an example of a key measure that you can just assess very quickly uh, and just work out exactly where you're heading. 
this I can't emphasize this enough and being up to date with factual and accurate information to be able to make decisions do not dwell in the what could be's or what might be's etc deal with what you actually have in front of you so know exactly how many uh, bulls you've got booked in how many bulls you've got on hand to uh, uh, to get rid of and how you're going to get rid of them so this is the second key to overcoming challenges is the skills that you need within the business. So you need to perform key tasks quickly and adroitly. Uh, I refer back to be familiar with your uh, farm accounting software package so you can perform those tasks really quickly and get the information up to date and make sure it's accurate. Also, too, a key skill is sometimes recognizing when you need to bring in outside ex expertise. Um, that sometimes you need to realize that there is probably another person out there that knows this, the the challenge that you're facing. So you just got to be just aware and uh, of your situation when you need to bring in that outside expertise to help you solve it. And it does save you time, and ultimately it will save you money as well. And this goes hand in hand with that one too, filling the skill gap before it's required. So that might be in the fact that uh, um, we're looking to uh, book lambs in or uh, cattle in to get rid of them. Uh, you're not too sure best way to do that. There is a lot of skills out there within the um, processor industry that can help you pretty quickly and they can give you some key advice about where you should be slotting things in. Uh, I'll touch on that a little bit more deeply when we talk more into the financial aspect uh, of where we're going with this. And lastly, experience. So knowledge, skills, sums up to experience. This is not farming's first rodeo. This has been happening to us for generations so uh, we've actually got a wide range of a knowledge bank we can tap into and without a doubt in your circle of friends family and group of trusted advisor there is somebody who's been through this before uh, in my personal experience i have a couple of older farmers who uh, have helped me a lot as i've farmed up here in the waikato where sometimes it rains sometimes it doesn't whereas in wanganui it used to rain all the time and they were invaluable just giving me a few key observations about where things are at. So don't be afraid to tap into those uh, into that wider network and circle um, to see how you how you come uh, and address this challenge. And it, currently with the high interest rates, we haven't been here since 2011, 2012, um, but there's a lot of people who have farmed through nine and ten percent interest rates and there's even some still around that farm between the 25 and 30 percent interest rates luckily they weren't around forever uh, and they managed to get through it so some of the things that they used cut corners take their advice put it into the business now so going back to winston churchill never waste a good crisis how do we turn this current set of circumstances into a success not only for the immediate 12 months, but in for a generation. Because if we look back and talk to those farmers who survived those 25 and 30% interest rates, they've been extremely successful from there. They took the learnings from that bad, bad experience and turned it into a success for not only one, but possibly two generations. You would have heard this time and time again. Plan, plan, and then plan again. Uh, not only is it critical in times of climate uh, stress, such as uh, droughts or wet winters, um, but it's also extremely critical when your business is facing a uh, an economic challenge. And this is the easiest time to do it because it's very clear where you want to be. And I'll run you through a small example of that, uh, what that actually means. But one of the key things to a plan is you do have to write it down and start from there. So here's a key one. 
have debt servicing 15% of farm income in five years' time. You notice it's very specific, 15% of farm income. It has a time frame, five years' time. So you have five years to get to 15% of farm income, and now you need to go out and get the information that will make it happen. And write this down because it's it, it's amazing when you write something down, the other answers come out as well. So key one might be that is you need so much a year paid off or a capital lump sale sum from the sale of X to get there in five years' time. Uh, that's pretty simple, can sometimes be challenging, can sometimes not be even acceptable to your farm business, but at least if you've written down, you've considered it. And then you actually say it'll take this to make it happen. And then work down what that makes to happen down, it make it, what it takes to make it happen. We do this on a whiteboard session quite often. It's just a brilliant... Uh, um, a brilliant uh, technique as you can write it down on a whiteboard and all of a sudden the whiteboard's just full. So like, for example, in their subdivision, there could be a potential subdivision on the farm. It could be a change in stock policy. There could be alternative income streams on the farm, uh, carbon farming. There could be uh, tourism, all of those sorts of things. Nothing's out of the, out of the extraordinary when you write them down in these sorts of situations. It's quite often a really good idea to have somebody with you when you're writing this down because they can spur you and they can actually make you think of the things that you would just throw, throw out off the top of your head. And that's why I just uh, want to re-emphasize there. It will require uh, a set of skills or professional input to do it. I find that accountants can be usually pretty good around these sorts of things because they know the numbers very well. Um, uh, obviously somebody outside like a farm consultant uh, and I've even done it with a, uh, a trusted friend who I really appreciate their creative thinking um, and that's where I, uh, I'll touch on that very shortly about having people in your team that challenge you and that's where perfect assemble the team put a team together no man or woman is an island no one expects you to be able to solve this by yourself. Um, usually within farming family businesses, you already have a, a fantastic team around. For example, a husband and wife partnership. I've seen some fantastic um, father-daughter or son uh, combinations that have built fantastic businesses as they uh, feed off each other and thrive off each other. A key aspect of successful businesses I see is people who can build a team around them. Um, and that team has usually got one goal and one goal in mind, and that is to make that family or that farm a more successful business. So once you've assembled the team, build the knowledge base and more importantly, fill the gaps. Now, I'd be the first to say that I don't know anything about technology. Uh, and however, in our consulting business, we have a person we call on an immediate, uh, uh, immediately who can fill the gap incredibly quickly around technology. So we can keep a pace of technology uh, and keep our business going. In farming, uh, there's a lot of gaps that we're not that farmers are not expected to have. Uh, a lot of that can be about intricate farming uh, financial products. Uh, other things can be around um, uh, forages, different forages, uh, animal health uh, solutions, all of those sorts of things that farmers should be have a working knowledge of, but not an expertise knowledge. And if that's where the weakness is, fill that gap. Now, this is something that's quite important to me, and, and I have seen this work successfully too as in your team, don't be afraid to put those who challenge you and make you uncomfortable alongside you, as long as they have the goal to make the situation better. Uh, I talked earlier about uh, a friend I used who had a lot more creative thinking than I, than I had when I needed a, uh, uh, a challenge to be overcome. Uh, and some of the things he put on the whiteboard made me extremely uncomfortable, but at least he made me think of them and he made me 
uh, challenged myself to make sure that uh, I hadn't actually dismissed them out of hand because it made me uncomfortable. It doesn't mean that you're going to put in somewhere there that you're always going to argue with. Just put in somebody there who is going to challenge you <coughs> and look at a look at a problem from a different perspective. Lastly, when you assemble the team and you are the leader of that team, be accountable. Uh, be accountable for the actions that they suggest uh, and that you say that you're going to do. Report back to them whether or not you've actually achieved it. Uh, so that is one of the key things there is that um, when you uh, deliver it, when you create and deliver a plan, be accountable to that. And that's also being accountable to some things that don't work. Not everything will be, not everything will work first time and be comfortable with that. You know, the old adage is you learn more from your mistakes than you do your successes uh, is always applicable, especially in farming. So be accountable. Um, and 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 implement the things that you've agreed to implement. Whether or not uh, they're a success or not, that'll be a long-term uh, judgment. Now, this is quite key to me too now in today's environment, is be your own expert. Um, as farmers and operator of farm, farming businesses, you are expected to know your business is better than anybody else. So be your own expert. What does that mean? Is know your numbers better than anyone else. Um, you know, be a master of your own balance sheet. Know what your equity is at a moment, moment's notice. Have your own KPIs. So you can say, right, this is, a, this is my measure of success. We always use the docking percentage and everybody, and which I'll touch on shortly, everybody has an idea where they're benchmarked within those docking percentages. But go outside your comfort, your comfort zone. The simple one, percent of farm working expense to gross farm income, immensely important in today's uh, um, financial environment where debt servicing is taking up more and more of our disposable income. And so therefore work out, well, how much does it cost me to run my farm? And our cousins, the dairy farmers, um, we know at a moment's notice what the cost of production is to produce kg of milk solids. I should I should say we should know that because that's what actually uh, drives our business. Another one is kgs of produce per hectare. The old-fashioned stocking rate per hectare uh, is still very applicable. Don't get me wrong, but now we're looking to be a little bit more sophisticated and work out how many kgs of produce per hectare, how many kgs of beef, lamb. Uh, venison, velvet, wool even. Um, but what it does is it actually demonstrates that you know your business pretty well. If you utilize uh, the farm accounting packages such as uh, Zero and especially Farm Focus, you can get that report at a, at a push of a button. All you need to do is make sure the right information goes in there. So those sorts of things can be fantastic shortcuts uh, and they're a really good um a really good measure of your business. Income per hectare, uh, often not talked about, uh, but however, that's one thing you can't change on your farm is how many hectares you've got. So income per hectare is a great measure that external people will measure you by. Uh, for example, financiers, uh, they're always uh, looking for what is the income per hectare to put a benchmark on it. And here's one that might be new, to uh, a few of you, but your loan security or your loan ratio, value ratio, how much debt to securable asset? Now, as I said, the external financiers uh, and bankers, they will live and breathe this LVR. So why don't you become an expert in your own number? And then you can have a realistic uh, discussion with them of where your business is at. In my experience, most uh, sheep and beef farmers, this is a major strength of their farming business is their loan value ratio, i.e. their debt to their securable asset, uh, their livestock, their land, uh, and, a, and a few other things, but mostly livestock and land. Uh, they actually have a very low loan value ratio, which is a fantastic thing. So that's definitely a strength, and you should know that within your own business. Also, 
benchmark. Benchmark to gauge how you're doing. This is really, really important. Uh, and I refer back to the old docking percentages there. You know, we we had docking percentages that we always referred to as the pub percentages. Uh, and we would tell everybody and benchmark how you are doing against what the other person would be telling you across the uh, across the jug in the public bar. You always took it with a grain of salt, but at least you could benchmark. We're now sophisticated enough to have some fantastic information coming through from um, such things as vet practices, uh, Beef and Lamb New Zealand Economic Service. I live and breathe that data. It's fantastic. It's so robust. Um, but yeah, benchmark how you're doing against similar farms to yours, because then that will indicate the opportunities that are out there, but also do it internally too. So uh, benchmark yourself against historical performance so you can show your direction of travel um, and you can be accountable for some of the, some of the decisions you've made. Uh, in two of my businesses, the kgs of produce per hectare and both my dry stock businesses, uh, we do benchmark ourselves internally uh, uh, every year. And the only the only thing that we're interested there is actually, are we increasing our kgs of produce per hectare? Uh, and that's our measure of success as we um, build up our equity and livestock, et cetera. So benchmark yourself against the fantastic uh, free information that's out there through um, Beef and Lamb New Zealand, but also do it against your internal uh, information as well. So you can track your progress because progress, regardless, is success. Um, we're growing our businesses. We're making them more resilient for the future. Now, once we're planned and we've built a team around us, take action. Um, but sometimes this action can be really daunting because it is a change and nobody likes change. Um, but New Zealand farmers are fantastic about testing and trying yourself. The on-farm trial is always proven to be the most accurate. Uh, for example, um, with our new sheep genetics out there, you can test it on your own farm and see if it works for yourself. Um, so don't be afraid about trying something in your own little uh, farm business, might be to a small extent, might be to a larger ex extent, and see if it works. Now, now, this is really important. You've got to be honest with yourself and review the outcome against what you thought was going to happen. Uh, from there, you'll learn more about the uh, strengths or opportunities within your business uh, rather than just banking it and moving it on. So you've got to review uh, the outcome um, of what was going to happen. My best example here was a, um, a winter lamb operation I was involved with, uh, where we we had a number of plans to get uh, a um, desired outcome. And it was one of those great uh, years where everything slotted in. There was a fantastic operator uh, the team around him was extremely strong. Uh, we had a generous season. Um, and uh, as it turns out, the uh, the purchase was just ideal of the lambs going in there. And, and our outcomes were better than we anticipated. And we actually spent an hour writing down what actually happened so we could actually work out why that was. And we knew the triggers to pull next time to make th those sorts of things happen again. So that review in that case was extremely valuable. And this is about being accountable to be honest with what works and wasn't what doesn't work in your situation. Every farm is different in my experience. Uh, they have different infrastructure, different soils, different skills that go in there uh, with the labor and the management of the farm. They have different capital structures. Sometimes what will help, what will work across your uh, boundary fence may not work in your situation. I find very rarely what works in the farmers weekly will work on my farms that I deal with as well. So always good to take to gather that knowledge, but you've got to be honest with what works within yourself and what doesn't work. I just see a uh, a question popping up there, which I feel free to throw questions in. Um, 
and this is a question which I'll, I'll address with now, is uh, what costs on farm can we delay for a year compared to farm working expenses that we need to spend each, each year? Uh, that's a great question. And one of the first things I'd say is, right, okay, what knowledge do we need in here? For example, uh, well, let's choose one of our largest expenses, fertilizer. What knowledge do we know to, to work out whether or not fertilizer to the same level as last year is required? We need soil tests. We need soil tests. We need what will be going out the gate in the form of production. Uh, so those sorts of costs, the high level costs, we need a lot more information. Um, and then we can challenge ourselves around uh, on-farm costs that can be delayed a year. And I go back to uh, the tougher years of the 80s, et cetera, like that, and, and make a simple list of what's nice to have and what do you need to have. Is it nice to have a new fence down there or will another two wires and 20 or 30 battens keep that going for the next five or six years until we're in a better position? So that is a, um, that's a really good thing to do is actually write down what the wants and the needs are in the, in the business um, to work out which ones you can delay. Uh, I would caution you just don't do a knee-jerk reaction of the of the most uh, the highest cost one you're going to cut off. Make sure that you have the right information to do that. Uh, now there was also another question in here which I just asked: uh, Where is the best place to find benchmarking figures for each region and land class? Uh, definitely, in my experience, it is uh, Beef and Lamb New Zealand Economic Service available through their Knowledge Hub which breaks it into the eight classes uh, from um, basically North Island finishing to uh, to extensive South Island, uh, but it also breaks it into the regions as well. And you drill down into that, not, uh, drill down into those figures and they're, they're very, very robust figures. Um, there's also the quintile figures. They are a year or two out of date but at least then they give you a good idea of where you're benchmarked in there as well. So those benchmarking figures for each region and land class are uh, available in, in such things as Beef and Lamb New Zealand. Uh, a few um, uh, farm consultancy firms will also have them as well. Um, feel free to tap into those ones. Uh, they usually come with a cost though, to be fair. Uh, but then again, as I said, sometimes the best information for benchmarking yourself actually lies within your business. So I'll just return back to my uh, um, presentation, but feel free to throw those uh, questions in there. Um, and as I said in here, take action. You, you learn more from your failures than you do your successes. So don't be, af don't be afraid to make a failure uh, as long as you understand what occurred uh, and as long as you know that the business can be resilient afterwards. But never ever waste a good failure as uh, as uh, Winston Churchill said don't waste a good crisis never waste a good failure if you can't learn something uh, each day then uh, you need to have a good hard look and see which progress you're making now most importantly and this is where as farmers we're very very poor on this is celebrate with the team when the progress and success is achieved and also along the way, not at the perceived end. Because with farming, you never get to the end goal. There's always something that gets in the way or moves the end goal a little bit to the left, right, or further into the distance. So as as the, as you go through here and uh, success is achieved, like quite often uh, on a lot of farm uh, businesses, uh, one of our key measures of success is having... Um, the use at three and a half or three to three condition score going to the going to the ram and the north waikato here um now the perceived end is a higher docking percentage or a higher amount of saleable lambs at the end but we always actually measure and and really uh um celebrate that success when we get to that this year we managed to do it uh, we had some different outcomes. We're learning from that at the moment as the docking figures come across the table. Um, and we're learning some things there. But what we did was actually made sure that we actually worked out, yeah, we can do it. In a challenging environment, we can get our ewes to that level to have a successful mating. 
Uh, and that always came with hard work from the team on the ground. So we always like to uh, note it and uh, and make sure that, that they understand that we're celebrating uh, that progress. And also, uh, and this is something that probably was <laughs> my upbringing, was take time to reflect, store it away for next time. So these are the... These are the times when you can just relax uh, over a barbecue. Uh, surfing for farmers is a great thing. It's just take time to stop farming for a second. Just reflect and say, yeah, that worked out okay. Or, yep, yeah, that didn't work out okay. And these are the reasons why. But most importantly, store it away for next time. Because sure as eggs are eggs, this is going to happen again at some stage. Uh, and I look back to when I was a relatively... Uh, young farmer and uh, yep our interest rates were uh, eight and a half to nine percent and um, some of the things we have to do within our business we did 20 years ago basically because 25 years ago now um, we had to do them then because it meant actually whether or not we were going to survive or not uh, so really interesting that somewhere in those deep recesses of the mind you bring those uh, experiences back again, but just take time to reflect. And I, and my wife and I were just having that discussion about two or three days ago, about or two or three nights ago, actually, about uh, what the sorts of things we did when our interest rates were that high. And we were actually doing it with a laugh, but it wasn't much of a laugh at the time. Um, now, a couple of questions before I go on to the next slide. Tips for convincing other people you're farming with to test and try new things. Um, Yep, this sounds like a, a trite answer, but you need to sell it. You need to say, if we can do this, we will have the same outcomes as X, Y, Z. If we can do this, we move our business here. You have to really try and uh, and sell it. And sometimes that is very difficult intergenerational. I'll acknowledge that. Uh, and and if you can't convince them, bring somebody who can. Uh I was fortunate to farm with a um, with a pretty innovative, gruff, grumpy old farmer in my location, a, a man well known by the name of John Reeves. Uh, and I always found that um, if he could talk to my wife about some of the things I wanted to do, I had more success than what I had. And so, you know, that was just a tip that I knew that if he, if he could say to her on a social occasion, oh, yeah, you should try this, it'll work. She comes home and tells me now that, yeah, I, why didn't you think of that? John Reeves said it would work. Uh, little did she know that I'd have a discussion with John Reeves and say that I'd, I'd like to try that, but I don't have much chance. So that's just a tip. Get somebody on your side, um, especially in that intergenerational confront confrontational situation. Um, but persevere. Um, everybody there wants to make the business a better success. Hey, Rob, thanks Thanks for that. You hear me okay? Yes, good. Hey, I just want to butt in before you go to the next slide because I, I do know what's on it. Um, a few things are, have cropped up, but I'd just like to say, say uh, thanks to James Kinsman for that last question. Um, mm -hmm. I thought it was a really good one, eh, because it's about bringing our mates along on the journey. But I just want to want to just head back to a few things that you've brought up there, and um, you nicely segued into this question is about the new tools and techniques and stuff. You um, technologies, you you backed yourself straight out of it by saying you had someone extra in the business who looked after that area because it was, wasn't necessarily a strength you was. But I just wonder if there's a couple of tools or technologies that you do use that that just spring to mind that would help people through the sort of these times we're in. Yeah. So um, I've been using a farm accounting software package from day one from uh, when I was farming. Uh, that's not a new tool, but for a lot of people, they're a new tool. Um, and I actually just had a discussion with my banker today who was just, well, just send me that, Rob, knowing that I had it at my fingertips. So uh, the online um, software packages you've got now, Zero Figured, uh, Farm Focus, there's a range of them um, that link with your accountant that make that technology and information transfer really good. So that's on the financial side. Um, I'm a I'm I'm an advocate uh, for the the way technologies that we use now and how we can share those online. Most of my farms that I consult on 
uh, remotely. Um, we use a program called Data Mars and where we can track uh, animal performance. So that's new technology and that we can use free of charge. I love free of charge. Um, we, uh, for our farm planning and for our mapping, and I've just done one this, uh, this evening, uh, use Google Earth Pro, but you, but Ravens Down and Balance have uh, free maps. You'll see over my shoulder, there was a 1973 map uh, that used to be the newest and best technology. Um, so there's a wide range of things. And the best thing about this is now through beef and lamb and other extension services, such as catchment groups, there's access to these technologies and there are workshops that you can use them. So there's just a couple of examples of new tech, uh, of technologies you can implement in your business that have very, very, very little cost, but can provide great value. Thanks. Thanks, Rob. Just the other one that you mentioned there is being up to date with factual and accurate information mm -hmm. to help you make decisions. Now, what I find is there's information overload out there. And mm -hmm. just wondering if you've got a couple of go-tos that you, you you regularly check in on to keep up to date with things. Yeah, so um, externally with external businesses, uh, I always check on uh, where the bank balance is, where the OD is. Um, so they're, they're very, very quick things to check in there. Uh, if I've got a if I've got a budget, that's fantastic because I can actually do budgets to actions. Um, but on a production wise, um, we have a technique in the in the business that we uh, immediately ask for um, livestock numbers, uh, and we can build a very quick feed demand feed supply profile. Uh, so it just puts it where the challenges in the business are there. Um, a couple of other quick things that we'll we'll look at is uh, is basically, and this is this is a little bit more um, uh, probably involved in the business, is uh, we look for things such as what the interaction with the staff has been, such as when was the last toolbox meeting was, when did you last work more than an hour or two with X Y Z just so we know that the team is being interconnected, um, especially from a manager's point of view to make sure that the manager is very clear what he wants to achieve out of the business, what we need him to do or she is to actually communicate it to other staff. So those are just three examples of things that we immediately check in. And that's probably worthwhile in a lot of owner operator businesses as well. Like how many times have you thought to yourself, gee, I haven't actually spoken to my third rep or my stock agent for a month. Um, and sometimes it's worthwhile just a five minute call, just to touch base with them. Thanks, Rob. You know me, I like to learn something new every night that I uh, come on one of these. Yeah. Use the word um, in your skills, performing your task quickly, anadrology. Can you explain to me as a poor East Coast educated person what that means? Sorry, you'll have to repeat that question, Mark. You uh, talked about in your skills slide, um, knowledge skills, performing key tasks quickly and adroitly. Oh, adroitly. Yeah. Uh, adroitly means that you um, complete them to a certain level of competence. So you, 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 and, and the speed at which you do them. So like, for example, uh, Rob McNabb butchers his way around a sheep shearing them. Uh, and Sir David Fagan does it adroitly. Thanks for that. That's really good. I've, I've marked that down as a learning for the night for me. Um, and I did like your thing about the first rodeo and a good friend uh, of mine and well known to you and a lot of folk, Richard Lee, has always mm. said good things. We've been here before. Let's use the experience. Or sometimes he says we've been here before. Didn't we learn? So I yeah. just wanted to, I thought that was a really good note you had there. Um, and that. And I just want to come back to another thing that um, has sort of cropped up as we were going through. Just as far as doing a SWOT, and, and you talked about building your team. So when you build a team, do you sort of look at that strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats thing and see who can fit into that? Is that how you do it? How do you build yeah. your team? Yeah, so how I build my team is, uh, <laughs> and I've, I've been fortunate enough to do this a couple of times where it's counted, is that um, I'm, I'm really, I try and be honest with myself and I know what I can provide to the team. Uh, and there is a couple of things 
that I always know that I can't uh, provide to the team. For example, um, a lot of the time is exactly that. I know that my time is limited or challenged. And so I like to put somebody in that team who has the time to devote to that business. And it's not always the operator, uh, but they have the time to devote. So that's uh, so you have to be honest and say, well, actually, what don't I, what don't I have? What range of skills don't I have? Um, and in a couple of farm situations, uh, there are some emotional skills that the farm operators don't have. Uh, and I see um, uh, a few more experienced people than myself that have those emotional skills to be able to come in and work through those. In certain circumstances where there is a lot of stress, I always value the input of rural support trust because those people are fantastic at doing that. Uh, so emotional skills, time, and then you become to the technical skills. Uh, and it might be around agronomy and it might be around um, financial skills or around animal health or around uh, soils and fertilizers. Um, they're, they're there, those skills are there and they are available. Uh, but we've just got to work out whether or not that's that's what the weakness is in the business. And and at the moment, we are looking at some weaknesses, in all honesty, a weakness is around that financial management. So sometimes you need to bring in somebody there who's got the rigour around knowledge and experience there. Thanks, Rob. Um, also, you put in there about, um, you know, putting someone in there who might make you feel a bit uncomfortable from time to time. And I've seen it happen. I'm just wondering on you, your view where you might be working on a with a team and the key principal who has the final business decision just says no. Mm -hmm. I always feel, and I'm interested in your view, that no is not the answer. No is the outcome. You need to explain why it's no. Poor eyes are sick. Elaine's torn a car really badly. Uh, Mark, and... And, and in a business situation, um, you can handle that relatively well uh, in, that, in that rigor of a board situation. Sometimes with an immediate family, um, it is more difficult to handle, and I acknowledge that. And sometimes, and I gave you the example of, uh, of, of my John Reeves down the road, uh, when I came across the impossible no, uh, I just had to approach it in a different way. And as you said, no wasn't the final answer. It was just this point in time. And when somebody else came to it at a different approach, I then got a positive answer. Didn't always work. I will say that. Didn't always work. <laughs> yeah, you can't, have so, success yeah a, all, you can't have success all the time in a good relationship, hey, Rob? You know, um, yes, there works quite well yeah. in my house most of the time. Um, <clears throat> just, just one of the other things, coming back to that cost control question, it was interesting... <clears throat> that um, there's some common themes coming through all the webinars about what to cut or what to manage as you go through. And I think you hit the fertiliser one, is that that's quite often easy because it's big. But um, just your views on sifting through your budget to see uh, where the smaller gains are in savings? Yeah, yeah. and uh, once again, that might be somebody who's external to your business to be able to say, actually, you know, you are spending... $18 a stock unit on animal health. And I've got quite a few guys who have better outcomes than you only spending $8. So let's have a good look at this and, and let's look at your purchasing, um, uh, purchasing, a, well, I'm going to call it experiences. How do you buy your, how do you buy your animal health? You know, where's your animal health plan? Do you buy it from whoever drives up your drive or you've actually got a plan around it? And so those are the little things that you can start to implement in your business that actually takes, uh, you know, you save 5% here and you save 5% there and you save 10% over there. Then all of a sudden, it's, oh, actually, you know, I've cut my farm working expenses from 58% down to 51%. And that makes a huge difference. And once again, it's that direction of travel. Um, yeah, so, and... And that's, and I'm going to make a, uh, an observation here. Farm expenses tend to creep up and creep out when we've had a couple of good years. When interest rates are low and product prices are good, we find that 
there are things that creep into everybody's farm businesses that are easy to have. Um, and But when the tide turns, you've got to know what things you need to take out. Just I'm going to keep on this theme. There's a couple more questions that have come through. And Cam, thanks for this one. And it's just opposite to the earlier question about, you know, what you cut or control. What should you target in good years? The question uh, goes, bank loan is an easy target. Is it is easy to calculate how much it's costing you? Or should you focus on improving soils, et cetera, for later, fin later financial gains? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And once again, it's about to, uh, setting those targets right at the beginning. If you are comfortably 15% of your um, of your gross farm income is going to debt servicing because you've got good farm good farm income at the moment or de uh, interest costs are low, always invest in your farm for to make it resilient in these downturns. And farmers know those things without a doubt. Uh, and I saw it across the Waikato in the period probably 2013 through to 2021, we saw the fences being fixed up, saw a lot of riparian fencing, good on them, that protected them for the future. Uh, the fertiliser companies will tell us that they had great years. There was a lot of fertiliser being um, being bought. So there was fences and fertiliser. Uh, there was a few new water tanks that were popping up everybody everywhere, water storage. So uh, water systems got improved. And we even got down to the point where people were starting to paint the sheds again. Um, now, do you need to paint those, you know, do, you've got four out of five sheds painted, do you need to paint the fifth one this year? Possibly not. Cool, Rob. Uh, I see another good old mate coming here, Lawrence Field. <clears throat> Welcome. Oh, oh. This will be good <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the uh, webinar, Lawrence. <clears throat> and he's made a couple of comments here, Rob. In a good year, don't forget about income equalisation deposits, having cash available to draw on in a tough year can be really build resilience and security. And there's other comment that I haven't crossed over yet is um, farm working expenditure as a percentage of GFR tends to drive creep in expenses. He mm -hmm. prefers to focus on farm working expenses a heck there and monitor that over time. Yeah, I thought a couple of good little additions too, or strengths of what, what you've been going through. <clears throat> now I'm just conscious where we're at and I just wonder if you'd like to do your last slide. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Mark. I'll just... Uh, um... Oh, sorry about this, Mark. Yep. So uh, let's bring this to a close. Um, let's be honest, economic cycles, weather and production systems are all different, but they're all similar and they do reoccur. Uh, you know, your Richard Lee quote, you know, this has happened to us before, didn't we learn? Um, great thing. Those who have learned from these sorts of things uh, are not doomed to repeat it. They are actually blessed to get through them again. One key thing here, all will be and can be overcome. No problem is insurmountable. There is no uh, finite end to this thing. It is called farming and it will continue uh, and farmers will continue. They will work their way around these obstacles. But knowledge, skills, and experience will make the issue manageable. Uh, if it seems, as I said, insurmountable, start to build up your knowledge base, your skills, and the experience will come along for the ride as well. Uh, use somebody else's experience by all means. Talk to the grey heads in the room, and they'll tell you uh, some of the stories about what made them successful through this period as well. But those three things there, knowledge, skills, and experience will make the issue more manageable for you. Uh, set your goal, devise a plan to achieve it, and assemble the team. That's how simple it is to overcome the, to eat an elephant at one bite at a time. One thing I'm really keen on for every farmer is be an expert in your own numbers. Make sure that you know your own numbers and your intricate numbers better than anybody else because you can't expect them to know them as well as you. Also, as you go along, review your progress and be prepared to change. Um, change is difficult to, to accept, but you are actually on the journey of change every single day. The weather tomorrow will be different from the weather today. It will change, and you will change your behaviour along with it. 
but just review your progress to make sure that you're heading along that way. Uh, and also it does give you a chance to just steer the ship in a slightly different direction as more challenges come along. And the lastly, always bank these experience because it does save time for the next cycle. This cycle will reappear in your farming lifetime. And if you can call on those sorts of experiences, it saves a heck of a lot of time. So uh, thank you all for uh, joining in tonight. Um, and Mark, I'm going to hand it back to you. You might have some last minute questions. Look, Rob, thanks. Always a pleasure doing business with you. Um, some real gems in there. And what I did like is some key themes that have come up in each of the webinars we've had. And I'm sure they're going to come up again. Those key points, building a team and those sort of things are so important to not get isolated um, when times are a little bit tougher. Um, just really important too, I know Liv is going to put up a poll set up in a second. If you can please just fill it out, it's very simple. Feedback is really, really important to us. So the poll is there. If you could just um, whack a few things in there, it's pretty simple of how you think things were going. And um, as I close, I want to shout out a big thanks to the team at Beef and Lamb New Zealand, um, especially this evening. Olivia, she just keeps everything going in the background. And I know uh, Liv is just a bit under the weather. I really appreciate you fronting up for us, Liv. Dean, thanks very much, mate, for keeping an eye on the question bar and being part of the team that's helped organise this evening. And Ali very much, who actually is the owner of this evening's um, a webinar from our team. Uh, a big shout out and thanks. Now, just remember that next week, same time, same place, we are going to hear from our banking team and banker insights for effective financial communication. And I think your bank should be a really effective part of your team. So I'm looking forward to hear, hearing and gaining a comprehensive understanding of key financial strategies tailored to the agriculture sector. And we're going to be joined by Dan Billing out of the mighty Tararua from the ANZ and, and Matt Hood, who's well known to a lot of you as well, who's now based in Blenheim with the BNZ partners. So um, from me, um, a big thanks. We'll give the rest of the evening back to you. Um, and yeah, go the ABs on um, Friday morning.